Hey guys, it's Abel here, and we are back for another book review. Um, for one, do not mind me. It is four in the morning, <laughs> and I just wanted to do a quick book review of two books that I finished while reading at my boyfriend's house. Um, because they're both kind of in the same category of depressingly triggering. <laughs> so we're just going to get over with it. So today we're going to be reviewing Winter Girls by Lori Halsey Anderson and My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Wong. What is that? By Jasmine Wonga, I think is how you pronounce it. I suck at reading cursive, so I'm sorry. Um, so for Winter Girls, I'm going to give it a an 8 out of 10 just because it's in the it's in the same realm of relatable stuff that I deal with and um kind of shit that I go through so it's very relatable um if you don't know it says Lee and Cassie are best friends winter girls frozen in fragile bodies competitors in a deadly contest to see who can be the thinnest but then Cassie suffers an ultimate loss, her life, and Leah is left behind, haunted by her best by her friend's memory and feeling guilty for not being able to help save her. In her most powerfully moving novel since Speak, award-winning author explores Leah's struggles through painful path to recovery and desperate attempts to hold on to the most important thing of all, hope. So, yeah, it's, it's a very triggering book. It has to do with, you know, eating disorders and all that stuff. And, um, it's very detailed informative about said mental health and mental disorder um and again it's also very triggering too but it's like i don't i don't get triggered that easily i i deal with shit like this all times so it's like it doesn't matter to me um but i did enjoy it a lot i've read this book before a long time ago um but the book wasn't mine i think i borrowed it from a a former friend and then my dad bought it for me um it's a really good book i do like it a lot Lori halsey anderson is also a very good author i think she's also up there with natalie d richards of like being my favorite because she writes so good i also have her other books speak that i will review later um because uh, there's gonna be a couple different books i'm gonna read over the past week um but yeah it's a pretty good book if you want to go read it you can i just i don't know anybody without the mental disorder to read it or without the relatable content to read it but if you want to try it out you can it is again triggering talks about eating issues and eating habits and you know all that good fun stuff so yeah uh next is my heart and other black holes why to speak spark can change everything <sighs> So it says, 16-year-old 16, 16 physics nerd Azel is obsessed with plotting her own death. With a mother who can barely look at her without wincing, classmates who whisper behind her back, and a father whose violent crime rocks her small town, Azel is ready to turn her potential energy into nothingness. There's only one problem. She's not sure she has the courage to do it alone. But when she discovers a website with a section called Suicide Partners, Azel is convinced she found her solution. Roman, a teenage boy who's haunted by a family tragedy, is looking for a partner. Even though Zell and Roman have nothing in common, they slowly start to fall for each other's broken lives. But as her suicide pact becomes a concrete, more concrete, Asal begins to question whether she really wants to go through with it. Ultimately, she must choose between wanting to die and trying to convince Roman to live so they can discover their potential energy together. So, I finished this, I think I finished this within two, two days, I think? It was a very good book, I got very attached to it quickly. Um... It's very, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the word. It's very captivating, and I did really like how it was written. It's also, again, a big cliche that you could guess from the beginning of how this all starts. Like, oh, two people want to kill themselves and find a website to do so. Oh, but it's a boy and a girl? How do you think that's going to play out? Oh, they start talking about each other's lives, and then guess what happens? They start to fall for each other, but they're like, no, we can't do this, we're supposed to die together, and we're not supposed to get attached, and then, obviously, you know how shit like that goes. If you read enough 
books that have to do with a boy and a girl where it's just like oh there's they're not supposed to fall in love but they do anyways and then shit starts to happen and they fall in love anyways and then it's a happy ending you tend to know and start to guess cliches like that i told my boyfriend i'm like this is how it's gonna go and guess what i was right with how it's gonna go so it's pretty fun it's pretty funny um i'm just gonna them but yeah it was still very good and i liked it a lot i'm so sorry i keep yawning i'm so tired i'm so sorry um but yeah it was very good and i did really enjoy it um it's not super long i mean it's not like the thickest book ever neither neither is like winter girls it's not like very hard to read but um but yeah this is a really like tragic romance type thing but like it's not like they one of them dies in the end type of thing one of them tried didn't succeed type of thing but you know it was still very good again i would give this i think i'd also give this an 8 out of 10 just because you know only reason, like, I don't give it, like, oh my god, like, it was it's because, again, it's a cliche. Not that there's anything wrong with cliches, but it's just, if I can guess from the beginning of, like, how how it's going to end and it ends that way, kind of ruins the point of me reading it. It's not that there's anything bad with that. I mean, I've read a lot of books at this point to where it's just, like, I could guess like, a cliche a while away and i also write this shit for a living so it's like it's nothing new out of my realm of like what it is so yeah um but those are good so i have the next three books that i'm gonna read um three of them all three of them are gonna be interesting so first we have speak by Lori halsey anderson as we were talking about there's a movie based on this with what was her fucking name uh, Kristen Stewart, because I think it came out in like 2004, but, so it says, I am outcast, the kids behind me laugh so loud and know they're laughing about me, I can't help myself, I turn around, it's Rachel, surrounded by a bunch of kids wearing clothes that most definitely do not come from the East Side Mall, Rachel Bruin is my, my ex-best friend, she stares at me sometimes above my left ear, Words come up my throat. There's a girl who suffered through brownies and uh, suffered through brownies with me, who taught me how to swim, who understood about my parents, who didn't make fun of my bedroom. Is if there is anyone in the entire galaxy, I'm dying to tell what really happened. It's Rachel. My throat burns. Her eyes meet mine for a second. I hate you. She mouths silently. Medina Sordino's freshman year is off to a horrible start. She busted an end an end of summer party by calling the cops, and now her friends and even strangers all hate her. Months pass and things aren't getting better. Uh, she's a pariah, the lowest of low, avoided by everyone. But eventually she reveals what happened at the party when she finally speaks the truth. Everything will change. So I pretty much know how this is going to go because I've seen the movie. Maybe the book will be different. I know books and movies of similar shit is always very different. And the books are usually better. So we'll see how it, how it varies from that. Um, next, there... Next is called There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I guess there's also a movie about it, which I didn't know. Um, but it says, It's been almost a year since Maniki Young came to live with her grandmother, and she's still adjusting to her new life in rural Nebraska. Then, one by one, the students of her high school began to die in a series of gruesome murders, with each increasing in grotesque flair. As the body count rises and the terror goes closer, will Maniki survive the, the, twist, the killer's twisted plans? So that seems pretty interesting. I wonder, I wonder where the movie is, because I haven't seen it on Netflix before. And then last but not least, you're going to be reading Girls Like Us by Christina Alger. And it says, FBI agent Nell Flynn hasn't been home in 10 years. Nell and her father, homicide detective Martin Flynn, have, n have never had much of a relationship. And Suffolk Country County will always be awash by the memories of her mother, who was murdered when Nell was just seven. But when Martin dies in a motorcycle accident... Uh, now must return home to close this estate, and the process up, and then the process ends up becoming involved in the last case her father worked, an investigation of the brutal murders of two young women. The further Nell digs, the more likely it seems that her father should have been should, should be the prime suspect, and that his friends on the police force are covering his tracks. Plagued by doubts about her mother's death and her own role in in, in Exorating her father in that very case, Nell can't help but ask questions 
about who killed two women and why. But she may not like the answer she finds. Not just not just about those she loves, but about herself. I think I got this at Target. Yeah. Target Club pick, so it seems pretty interesting. And it's also not a very long read. I think it only has 30 chapters. Yeah, 31 chapters, so it should be pretty simple. Um, I'm hoping to get some of this done this week, but I got a lot of shit going on, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, there's the ending of that. I hope you all enjoyed. I love you guys. Everything's in the description. And I'm going to say bye-bye.